Conference on BCDA's joint venture agreement with MTD Capital Burhad on the new Clark City Phase 1A. So with us today is BCDA President and CEO Vince Dizon and Government Corporate Counsel Elpidio Vega. So I now give the floor to Basis Conversion and Development Authority President Vince Dizon. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, first of all, I just wanted to, to, to thank uh, Justice Vega for hosting us today um, and also for joining us in this to clarify some of the issues that have come out recently uh, regarding the joint venture between BCDA and MTD uh, Burhad Capital, you know, about the, specifically about the sports facilities that are already in New Clark City right now and already being used and enjoyed not only by our athletes but also by the public at large you know you know let me just start by saying this this opening will be very short you know, I, so it will have more time to to answer questions from the members of the press but let me just start by saying that BCDA actually was quite apprehensive to discuss this now because we would really rather just focus on the Southeast Asian Games and our athletes. I think our athletes especially and our people uh, deserve the focus to be on that. No, I mean, there's more than enough time to discuss this later on as, as actually everybody in the country has been calling for. Um, but, well, we're here. No, we're, we're here now, and I uh, personally just want to clarify everything right here, right now, with everyone. No? Um, also, uh, you know, there's a typhoon that's going to hit us tomorrow. Uh, God willing, it's going to weaken, um, but we have to prepare for it. And we're actually right now in the midst of preparing uh, Clark and New Clark City for the typhoon because we will also be hit, um, uh, albeit, you know, uh, not, not the center won't be in central Luzon, but we'll still get hit. You know? And we're, we're, we're anticipating uh, winds of up to 100, 100 plus kilometers an hour. Obviously, the, the athletes are there. They're about, right now, there are about 1,500 athletes already in New Clark City that we're hosting. And we want to make sure that everybody's safe. And we want to make sure that um, uh, all the spectators are also safe if the, the events uh, are decided to push through given the typhoon. So, you know, there's so many things that we need to look at, so many things to be proud of. We just, you know, yesterday was a fantastic haul for the athletes, uh, 22 golds, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm not sure about my, my, my stats, but I think this is almost the same number of total of goals that we got in 2017. No? Uh, almost, no? in, in obviously in only one day. So it's really something to be proud of. And yesterday, you know, I was just at the water polo game where our water polo team, uh, both men's and women's, um, uh, finished uh, at the podium. Our women's finished bronze. And our men, after I think more than 10 years, uh, finished at the podium and we finished silver and we edged out the top uh, team in the region, which is Singapore, who apparently has never been beaten. And I, in fact, I got, a, I got hugs from the Indonesian team because they, were, they won gold. And uh, they told me, when they were hugging me, I said, why are you hugging me? I, I said, then they said, because this center is historic because it's the first time Singapore was ever beaten. No, in the last, I don't know, 20 plus years. So, you know, it, there's so many stories of um, unity, of coming together uh, for our athletes. And I'd rather talk about that. But, well, you know, I don't want to make it seem as if we're skirting the issues that have been raised about this joint venture. So we're here right now to lay down five facts, just five facts, you know, which I hope our friends from the media will listen to um, and consider. Because really, a lot of the news that has been coming out um, has been very, very unfair, to say the least. Why is it unfair? 
because you came out with a story that is totally incomplete. Totally incomplete. No, um, even though BCDA reached out to several outlets, um, in fact, sorry, Raf, no, I have to just tell you, you know, you sent an email to BCDA asking for a few, asking us some questions, right? However, before we even sent you our responses, the story already came out. And I have, I, I think that can be borne out, no? And, um, we sent our we got your email in the morning. We sent our responses maybe in what two hours, and um, a, a story already came out. So, you know, I can understand uh, uh, you know the the uh, the nature of the media to come out with stories, but I think we should all be responsible, no enough to get all the information. No, I mean, for example, you know. Uh, I don't think any of those that wrote this story actually even approached or asked OGCC for their uh, input. And all the stories quoted uh, various OGCC opinions. But did any of the media that wrote these stories bother to just ask the OGCC, ano po ba ito? Ano po ba ang buong kwento? No, kasi... In the, you cannot take stories piecemeal. Diba? You cannot take one document separate from another document. That's not how these things work. And that is the height of irresponsibility. I'm sorry, I have to say that. No, so I hope that today I'm here, Justice Vega is here, I will be lay laying down a few facts for you about this joint venture. And I hope we all get clarification. Now, if you're still not clarified and if you still think there's something wrong, well, um, that's your choice and that's your uh, uh, opinion already. But what I want to discuss today are facts. No? So let's go through the facts one by one. Um, before I go into this, Justice, you want to say anything or wait a minute? It's okay. Okay. So. Fact number one, and I'm going to read this now, so it's not subject to any interpretation, and we will be providing the members of the VD, uh, media copies of this. And uh, I think we're all on, on Facebook Live right now, so you know, um, everything is documented properly. Fact number one, the Asian Development Bank served as transactions advisor for this project from beginning to end. The eight representatives of the ADB are here right now. The ADB advised all BCDA on all, all, underscore all, financial, technical, and legal aspects of this project. And I don't know about you, but we trust the ADB. We trust them that they had gave us the best advice, and they will never give advice that is illegal. This included, and this is important, the building of the sports facilities that went through public procurement through a competitive Swiss challenge. Now, I've heard and I've, I've, I've um, read several articles saying that this project did not go through public bidding or public procurement. I have to correct that right now. It did. There are various modes of public procurement and public bidding, and a competitive Swiss challenge is one of them. And based on the advice of our advisors and the legal opinion of our statutory council, the Office of the Government Corporate Council, this project went through public procurement through a competitive Swiss challenge. Very, I just want to lay that fact number one down, okay? Number two, fact number two. The sports facilities, and I, this is why I wanted the inquirer here, because um, I really um, have to disagree with the press uh, release or the, the, the story in the Inquirer that made it appear that this project was, uh, I don't know what the exact words that were used, but were uh, tailor fit for MTD, meaning the sports facilities were tailor fit for MTD, something to that effect. No? Um, and uh, it was meant to defraud the government. Wow, you know, that is really heavy stuff, huh? 
But I just want to lay down one very important fact. And that fact is, the sports facilities were not part of the original proposal of MTD for phase one. They were not. MTD submitted an unsolicited proposal, and those sports facilities were not part of their phase one proposal. It was the government, it was BCDA, that required that the sports facilities, and not just any other sports facilities, hindi lang po pampagarong pambansa, no? pero sports facilities that were, that were going to be certified facilities by the international accrediting agencies to fulfill the requirements for the Southeast Asian Games 2019. That is fact number two. It is a fact. Okay? Fact number three. The contract is very advantageous to government. Why? Why? Because for the sports facilities, the government will not pay a single centavo to the developer until the facilities are completed and accepted. If you look at government projects in the past, projects of various agencies of government, all of these projects require advanced payments, mobilization. They require progress billing, meaning you pay every month. But if you look at projects in the past, I don't want to go into specifics, but how many projects in, in the past have been left unfinished and unusable to the general public despite having paid either fully or substantial amounts to developers and contractors? How many? Look all around the country and you will see projects like this. And yet in this contract, the government will not pay a single cent, single centavo to the developer until it is completed and accepted. In fact, now, we're already using them. Our athletes are already using them. The public is enjoying them. For the first time since 1934, has the government built facilities of this scale and magnitude for our athletes. And yet, some people say it is disadvantageous to government and even have the temerity to say that it was meant to defraud the government. How can the government de be defrauded when it has not paid a single centavo until the facility is completed and uh, accepted? How is that possible? Okay, fact number three. Fact number four. And this one also came out in the inquiry today. That's why you know I really feel bad that the inquiry is not here. I'm here ah, you're here. Thank you very much. I, you're. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Ramos. Thank you for being here. No, thank you for being. I hope you didn't miss the other facts. I can repeat them for you later. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. This came out in the Inquirer article. It said something like, the MTD borrowed from DBP used the money of the Filipino people for a Malaysian company. First of all, let me just say, when foreign investors come to the Philippines and invest money and raise finance and borrow money, can they borrow from local banks or not? Can they borrow from uh, banks like DBP, etc.? They can, right? They can as long as, number one, there is no government guarantee. Right? That I, the government does not guarantee the private enterprise that they will get paid. And in this case, there is absolutely no government guarantee, whether from BCDA, or any other government agency. Absolutely not. And MTD borrowed on commercial terms. Commercial terms. There was no you know, discount on the interest rate. There's nothing like that. They borrowed on commercial terms. And DBP in its charter is allowed to lend on commercial terms. 
The only guarantee that is present here, which is actually very, very important, not just for BCDA, but for DBP, the lender, is a guarantee from the mother company of MTD, and that it submitted as a requirement of the Development Bank of the Philippines for the loan. There is a guarantee from the mother company that in case MTD Philippines or MTD Burad is not able to pay, the mother company in Malaysia will pay. But there is no guarantee from the national government. So I really, in my mind, I really cannot fathom anything in the loan agreement between MTD and DBP that constitutes something that is disadvantageous to government. In fact, DBP even makes money out of it, right? Because they charge interest. Hindi ba? Now, maybe what you were saying is, since it's funded by the national government, then that is a guarantee. Well, sorry, I'll have to just correct you on that. That's not a guarantee. Why? Because the payment to MTD is contingent upon completion and acceptance. Now, if it's completed and accepted, should the government pay? Why, of course. Of course the government should pay. In Dubai? Why? Do you think this, this is free? Diba? Of course the government should pay. But it is not a guarantee in the loan. There is no such guarantee. I just want to keep on hammering that because I really take offense at the Inquirer article. Uh, Marlon, no, I, I know you have sources. It wasn't you. You quoted sources. But, you know, at the very least, you should have asked. May garantia ba to? Ginaranti ba to ng national government na kung hindi mabay na kailangan bayaran? And you would have found out very easily na wala. No? Pero wala eh. So walang, walang ganun sa, sa article. So I'm pointing that out right now. Finally, fact number five. The OGCC, and I will, I will ask Justice Vega to, to, um, to speak more about this, never gave an unfavorable opinion. If you read the OGCC January 30 opinion and you read the dispositive portion at the end, they never said BCDA don't sign. Magian, no. What OGCC did was it gave its comments and suggestions to which BCDA, with the help of its advisors with the, through the Asian Development Bank, addressed and clarified in letters succeeding. And the OGCC, in response to clarifications made by BCDA, unequivocally said that the provisions of the executed JVA and the legal framework of the project are in compliance with existing laws, rules, and regulations. Now, of I can already anticipate the next question. Eh, sir, bakit nyo pinirmahan? Bakit hindi nyo hinintay na lumabas yung final OGCC uh, clarification nung, uh, I think it was in October? Two reasons. Number one, BCDA, through its own lawyers and legal counsel, believed, believed, uh, I, I, I will emphasize the word, believed, that we already addressed the concerns of the OGCC in the final JVA that was signed in uh, January, February of 2018. And in response to this, BCDA made the decision, its business decision, which by the way, is also empowered to do under its corporate charter and even the OGCC acknowledges that. If you look at the dispositive portion of the, of the OGCC opinion, it says that. BCDA can give due course to this. And the second reason is very simple. Very simple. We were told that we needed to build facilities that we would need for the Southeast Asian Games. Remember, ah, the, the, the proponent submitted a proposal without those sports facilities to be built. It was BCDA who said, we need those sports facilities to be part of this because 
we will be hosting the 2019 Southeast Asian Games, and we need those facilities post haste. This was 2017 and then 2018. You know how long it takes to construct a 20,000 seater stadium? You know, when the Japanese representatives from the Japanese government visited the New Clark City Stadium earlier this year, they are amazed at the speed and the quality of the work because they were themselves building their own stadium. And you know what the Japanese officials told us? You know, we should, we should have hired you guys to, to build our stadium because it's still not finished and we're having, some, uh, we're, 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 we're having some issues with the timeline. It's not easy um, to our friends in the media to build these facilities, not let alone build certified facilities. Which, by the way, these facilities have already been certified by both IAAF and FINA. It's not easy. So BCDA, because of the need to build these facilities, decided. And we were able to start and we were able to finish ahead of schedule. It was a business decision on the part of BCDA. However, after the clarifications were made, OGCC said, BCDA, tama yung ginawa nyo. It's really as simple as that. Ito yung sinasabi ko sana, no, before I end. No, na, you know, you cannot take an issue or a project just based on one piece of documentation that, I don't know, someone gave you or you got from an anonymous source. You cannot do that. It's really unfair and irresponsible. You have to understand the entire structure, the entire process by which this was done. And that's really what, you know, what I'm frustrated about. No? Finally, we have facilities for our athletes. You know, you see our athletes, and I really in, wanna invite all of you there. You, you, you come, you talk to our athletes. Don't talk to me, don't take my word for it. Talk to our athletes, ask them. Ask our athletics team, ask our swimming team, our water polo team, our diving team. Ask them, what do they feel? And what do they think about these facilities? They've been neglected for decades. And now that they have these facilities, which were developed with absolute transparently, a uh, transparency, with through the best advisors that we can get, not through the Asian Development Bank. And yet with one article, with one, it's just so easy to just say, it was meant to defraud government. And really, it just pains me. No, I'm sorry. No, I, I understand the role of the media. No, but, um, it just pays me, and, and not to count the timing of all of this. First day, 22 goals. And in the front page of the Inquirer, you have our athletes being hailed, being honored. And yet, the facilities that were built for them after decades of neglect are being attacked unfairly. Why? Because you didn't get enough information. It's, it's, it's so unfair, and I, it, never mind me, never mind me, never mind BCDA. We, we, we know what we're doing. BCDA, long before I came in, has been doing this for the last 25 years, successfully. They've been entering into joint ventures, um, doing privatization projects since 1992, when they were formed. Never mind BCDA, never mind me, personally. But the effect on our athletes, the effect on our people who, who are there, who, you know, if, yesterday I was there, last night with Secretary Bernard Romulo. There were so many people coming all the way from Pangasinan, Metro Manila, Bulacan, everywhere, just to see the facilities. And all they could say was, wow, finally, meron tayong ganito.
makes you so proud. Especially when Singaporeans, Malaysians, Thais, Indonesians, they tell the athletes, your facilities are fantastic. They're even better than ours. So, you know, this is the reason why I'm here today. I really didn't want to, between you and me, I wanted to do this after the games. But I felt it was incumbent on BCDA to respond to this now. Not for us, but for our athletes and for our people. They've waited long enough for, as the cliche goes, world-class facilities. Long enough. Our athletes have waited long enough. And that's why we're here. That's why we're clarifying all of this with facts. Not with conjecture. Not with quotes from unnamed sources. But with facts. So I hope, you know, we can discuss this uh, we can talk about this. I'll be open to any of your questions. Uh, but before that, I'll just pass it on to our, um, uh, to Justice Vega, our uh, government corporate counsel. Thank you very much. Good morning. The uh, contract review, which was uh, issued way back in uh, January, was indeed not a negative opinion or contract review. But in fact, it approved and gave the go signal to the BCDA. The only problem then was more on the modality on the procurement. And that was, however, explained very well and expertly well by the uh, BCDA in going into the joint venture. We have studied it. And we found that the same is a joint venture and has passed the rules and regulations regarding it. That's why in October, we gave the affirmative opinion. After the several explanations, letters and discussions with the uh, BCDA legal and management staff. So I hereby confirm that the same is really about board, and we found no legal impediment to its execution. And the question on uh, whether the same should have been done earlier, the fact is the first opinion already gave the go signal with regards to the joint venture agreement. So in that particular circumstance, the BCDA was really in the right track. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Vince, uh, Justice Vega. The floor is now open uh, for your questions. Please state your name and your media affiliation. Hi, Sir Ralph Rivas. Pa. Sir, a uh, question lang po regarding the uh, JV, uh, the draft and the final. Uh, made, we spotted differences kasi, and we just wa I just want to uh, clarify kung alid yung uh, ginamit for the Swiss Challenge. Because uh, there are na, sir, kasi yung, sure. yung sa JVA, sir, we found that uh, yung may nakalagay dun sa draft na stipulated na kailangan may favorable opinion and then in the final uh, na wala siya and then the 50-50 income sharing na provision is wala sa draft pero nadagdag siya doon sa final. Okay, let me respond to that now. Subject to clarifications from our, our, our council. No? Number one, as to the question, ano yung nasunod, yung draft o yung final, that's pretty clear. That's pretty clear, Ralph. Yeah, yeah. It's the final. Yeah. So, okay. So, no, because you asked me, ano po ba yung, uh, yung na napirmahan? Obviously, yung final. Okay? But, sir, but no, sir no. The, draft was, uh, the draft was the one na dumaan sa OGC. I will explain that. That's your second question. So, if you let me explain. Remember, the OGCC gave comments and suggestions. Can we go to fact number 
No, uh, there, the fact number five, yes. The OGCC gave its comments and suggestions. The changes to the draft were responses and changes based on the comments and suggestions that the OGCC made. Kaya siya nagbago. Kaya nga, tama si Justice Vega, nung sinabi niya ng OGCC, uh, ito ang comments and suggestions namin, BCDA with its lawyers and its advisors addressed those comments in the draft. In particular, one comment was with respect to uh, the, the, um, Sorry? The sports facilities. Um, that um, BCDA should have a share. In one of the comments of OGCC was, dapat may share si BCDA dun sa revenues or income or profit from the sports facilities. That was not in the original draft. You're absolutely correct. We put it there precisely because we wanted to address the comments and suggestions of OGCC. Why? Because, ang sabi ni OGCC, dapat merong share si BCDA doon. So, ginagay yon at ninegotiate yon with the other party. However, we also added there a coratilia no, in the final draft, if you, will, if you will look at it. We said there that BCDA can pay in annual availability payments or annual, let's put it simply, annual amortization. No, para hindi mabigat. No? Pero, ginagay din namin on just like any uh, agreement of a similar nature, like a car loan or a housing loan, na we can prepay in advance to avoid payment of interest. Di ba? That makes sense, di ba? We have that option. Because we knew that we wanted to see if we could get funding from the national government, which we eventually did, no? from the General Appropriations Act approved by Congress. But remember, BCDA was committed to pay for this regardless of us getting a subsidy or not. We were committed because as, as I've been repeatedly saying over and over, that the sports facilities were not just being built for the Southeast Asian Games. Yes, we built them and we asked them to be built in phase one because we were hosting the Southeast Asian Games. But the legacy or the long-term plan for these sports facilities goes way, way beyond the Southeast Asian Games. So BCDA was ready to invest in these facilities. No? So that is the reason why there was a change from the draft to the final. Primarily uh, because of these comments and suggestions provided by the OGCC. And then, uh, follow up lang po on uh, another uh, matter. Um, bakit po siya uh, JV again, uh, to be more clear, rather than a build transfer? Okay. When the submission of the unsolicited proposal came, I think the first submission was in April. That was the earliest submission. No, but we had to we had to um, go through our internal processes to to finalize the guidelines no, of BCDA. But in the original proposal, it was already a joint venture. So the the the, the mode of uh, of development did not come from BCDA. It came from the proposal of MTD. It did not come from BCDA. It came from that proposal. However, after thorough review and study by both BCDA as well as our advisors from the Asian Development Bank, it was agreed with the advice of the ADB that the JV was the best and most practical, most transparent uh, mode to do this project. Why? Because, number one, because it allows BCDA to simply leverage the land, the asset, no? and allows the, the developer to put in the capital for development. 
the only issue were, were the sports facilities. Because the developer never proposed to build the sports facilities in 2018. Why? Because building sports facilities for the developer at a point where there is no critical mass in a city yet is not commercially viable. And that's also what ADB told us. Building a stadium, an aquatic center, is not commercially viable. Government has to come in to build it. That's the only way. There is no other way to build them, especially in the timeline that was given, no? except through the government. And our advisor said the JV is the best mode. That's why we, that's why we agreed with the mode. And this was, as Justice Vega already pointed out, um, validated and confirmed by the OGCC. Because we're allowed to do that. There is a misconception that public bidding or public procurement is limited to a bidding process under the Government Procurement Act. That is a wrong conception. There are several modes of public procurement or public bidding. GPRA, the RA 9184, uh, the Build, Operate, and Transfer Law, the NEDA 2013 Joint Venture Guidelines, and guidelines of GOCCs. Those are all possible modes. And they are all competitive. They are all public procurement because all of them require a form of competitive selection. All of them. So it is not correct, Raf, in your article to say that this did not go through public bidding. It did. There was a, sorry, in a f another fact, I think fact number two, uh, one, sorry. It went through public procurement through the mode of competitive Swiss challenge under the joint venture guidelines of BCDA, which we are empowered to have. By the way, if you look at the NEDA JV guidelines of 2013, it specifically stipulates there that GOCCs uh, are not covered by that because they can have their own guidelines uh, to dispose of assets under their... Um, their regular course of business. And this is what the BCDA guidelines is, is for. No, so so mm -hmm. that's the you know that's the that's the factual response to that. Sir, sorry, last sure. I missed, uh, no problem. I missed asking this sir. Yung uh, uh, yung in the draft sir there was a uh, favor favorable opinion na kailangang makuha ng BCDA for it, for the project to push through and uh, nasa GCG G rin ata na okay. ano and then you uh, the October lang dumating yung uh, okay. from the OGCC Okay sir. I'll ask um, Justice Vega to respond to that. he actually already did earlier um, but let me just state sorry fact I will go back to the facts no because I just want the facts to speak for themselves no um, because these questions are addressed by the facts. Yeah. Fact number five, the OGCC never gave an unfavorable opinion, including OGCC opinion January 30, no? which was explained by Justice Vega. And I'll maybe just ask him to you know, explain that again. Yeah, it's true that there is this uh, GCG circular which states that uh, there should be an approval from the OGCC before a, a major project is uh, executed. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to point out that uh, in the first opinion or contract review by the OGCC, it already gave the go signal for BCDA to enter into such an agreement. It's just that there were some clarifications to be made in order that the same will be uh, finally executed. But it did not say that BCDA should not go into this particular JBA. So there was already a go signal from the original opinion 
And after that, some clarifications and which we confirmed on October of that year. So I hope that answers your uh, question. Thank you. Any other question? Yes. Good morning, sir. I'm Marlon Ramos from the uh, Inquirer. Just to follow up on the question, sir, yung taga, uh, sure, sure, sure. Ko um, you, is securing a favorable um, opinion from GOCC a requirement based on your own guideline, uh, September 2017 BCDA guideline on joint venture agreement? Yes. Uh, okay. So it's a, it's a, a yes. yes. Yes, and um, I, I know your next question oh, already. So uh, can I just respond? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, because you're, st you're saying, and I think uh, this will be the third time no, that this has been addressed. No? Yes, you're absolutely right. And in our joint venture, we feel and we believe, sorry, not feel, we believe that we secured a favorable opinion already to sign. And this has already been uh, buttressed and uh, validated by uh, the OGCC. So you're right. Yeah. And we believe we did. Sir, sir. Um, also, in the January uh, 30, 2018 uh, OGCC contract review, um, in what part there na nagsabi na y you can go ahead without uh, revising or kasi I, I, I clearly remember yeah. na nakalagay doon in the the opinion written by then uh, Government Corporate Council uh, Horado. Yeah. He stated na may babaguhin kayo specifically yung can section we read, 8. Can we, uh, sir, can we read that okay, portion sir. right now? I'll just ask our... Okay, uh, thank, you. thank you, sir. In sum, uh, this is the dispositive portion, okay, sir. conclusion of the January 30 contract review. In sum, we appreciate the feasibility, efficiency, and the financial soundness of the project, which we did not cover in this review, but only the legal framework by which the project will be undertaken and the provisions of the JVA. We have made our observations, comments, suggestions about for the consideration of BCDA. And subject thereto, BCDA may then give due course to the proposed joint venture agreement. So that is in gist the uh, conclusion of uh, the then government corporate council. Sir, uh, there was also a part where uh, uh, the OGCC then um, mentioned that y you have to change yung several uh, stipulations in the draft uh, JV yes. to conform with the yes. country's uh, joint venture agreement. Kasi yes. if it's a joint venture agreement, mm -hmm. ayun tam, sir. Sure, sure. If, if it's a joint venture agreement, why do you have to pay uh, MTD Capital Berhad? What will be their... Uh, part in the uh, agreement if it's a joint venture. Okay. Okay. Ganto, ah. uh, number one, there were, can we go back to that again? Because we keep on, I, I think we should keep that fact. Yeah. Okay. There, because this is uh, where the questions are coming from. There were comments and suggestions made by the OGCC January 30 opinion. Uh, Raf asked earlier, Bakit may nagbago dun sa draft, dun sa final? Ang sagot dun, it was made, those changes were made to address those uh, comments and suggestions and observations. So that is my response to your question. Now, of course, you're going to ask me, eh bakit hindi nyo binil transfer na gang? Bakit nyo Genevi? Yun ang tanong mo eh, tama ba? Yes, okay. Ang sagot dun, simple lang. Naniniwala kami, we believe, together with our advisors, that the JV mode was the best mode to do this given the, the financials, that everything, the financial, the technical, and the legal um, considerations for this project. No? And this is confirmed by both the Asian Development Bank no? and later on by the OGCC. That's why we made that decision. That's why we did not go into building transfer. Because if, between you and me, if we went into building transfer, we felt 
that we believed that this project would not be viable. Why? Because, number one, we would not be able to build them in time. Number one. And also, that mode would also sacrifice the long-term development of the phase one of New Clark City. That will bring me to your next question. Bakit binabayaran si MTD kung JV yan? Okay. You have to understand, and again, this is very important, no? because you really need to get all the facts before you can fully understand the structure of the joint venture. Under the joint venture, it is not only the, joint, the sports facilities that are going to be built. It is not only the sports facilities. If you go to New Clark City right now, there are other facilities there that have been built outside of the sports facilities. These are primarily the government offices and the government residences. Okay? Because this was really the original proposal of MTD was to build satellite government offices, residences, a commercial facility to build a new city, similar to the things that they have done for provincial governments. Sa provincial governments, walang sports facilities doon. At paulit ako, fact number, I think two or three, MTD. No, up, up, there. That's why the sports facilities were not in the proposal of MTD. It was BCDA that asked them to put it there because we needed them. We needed to build them for the, for the Southeast Asian Games. No, because we needed a contractor who had the capability uh, to build, design and build a world-class sports facilities. And MTD had the track record because they built, uh, they were the one of those who built the, was that, um, uh, stadium in, in Kuala Lumpur, the, the Bukit Jalil um, Stadium in Kuala Lumpur, which was used in the 2017 Southeast Asian Games. No, so through the advice of the Asian Development Bank, we required that. That is why there are two components in the joint venture. There are the buildings, government buildings and the residences, which MTD spends for, which the government does not pay, no, does not pay at all. No, that is through a completely uh, commercial arrangement under, under the joint venture agreement. But you have the sports facilities which MTD will build through its own financing and its own capital, but the government must pay either through availability payments of five years or through a one-time payment in order to um, save on interest. That was the structure. No? So it's incorrect to say that the JV was only about the sports facilities. It was not. Okay, sir. Uh, under the country's uh, JV law, is it... Uh, country's JV law? Uh, uh, yung, yung joint venture agreement policies, uh, government laws and policies concerning uh, joint venture agreements. Uh, is the government required to pay its partner? Uh, are there other government projects similar to this, uh, a JV in nature, but the government is paying its partner? Now, I don't know. For BCDA, I don't recall. No? I it's don't recall of any. It's yeah. It's but again, I, I know where you're going. No, but again, what is, what, what is the important thing? The important thing is it is legal, it is transparent, and it is not disadvantageous to government. That is the most important thing. That is the most important thing. No, and now we have these facilities, and now we, we can enjoy them, our athletes can use them, and the government, of course, will have to pay for them. Of course. Because after we pay, those facilities will be owned by the national government. They will be owned by national. They will not be owned by the uh, by MTD because we've already paid for them. Yes, sir. So, uh, the original uh, proposal, ang, ang budget is uh, the cost was eight eight billion five hundred something, eight point five billion. Is it correct? I'm I'm Dun not sure. 
I am not sure. We will have to check on the original costs. But suffice it to say, no, and uh, uh, ADB was instrumental in this. From the original cost of the sports facilities, from the original cost of the sports facilities, through the negotiation process under our JV agreement, we were able, through the help of the ADB, reduce the cost by almost or actually by 50% from the original cost of MTD. Napababa, through the help of the Asian Development Bank, yung cost ng facilities. Mm -hmm. And it was this that was subjected to Swiss challenge. So not only were we able to bring down cost, this was also subjected to Swiss challenge and to um, competitive to a competitive process. And I just wanted to um, emphasize, sorry, I w this was just passed to me right now, that one of the major reasons why we wanted a joint venture so that BCDA could oversee and ensure the development of this greenfield project. Because if it's just a simple turnkey or build, operate, and transfer, we have no, um, we have very little power to oversee the development. But since it is a joint venture where BCDA has stake in the joint venture, we have the power to oversee and develop the, um, the, the greenfield city, no, the uh, new Clark City. Because under any other mode, we wouldn't have the power to do that. We wouldn't be able to set guidelines for development. We wouldn't be able to, to set the standards, the design standards of the development. So it's everything about this is not only above board and transparent, but it's very, very advantageous to government. Believe me, kaya na sinasabi ng marami, no? Kahit sa Plaza Miranda, ipaglalaba namin ito, no? Yun na nga, syempre, kailangan maintindihan natin lahat. No? You cannot take this project like in piecemeal no? and just nitpick on certain documents that you got. No? So you mentioned yes. that you were able to secure a funding from uh, Congress for this year, for this project yeah. under the JEA. Yes. How much, sir? For 2019, 9.5 billion. And uh, under the agreement, you... Eight and a half uh, million. Uh, uh, yes, so tapos okay. you, you can pay it 2.2 million a yes. year for five years. That's right. Uh, That's right. Sir, uh, sino, well, bakit namin, bakit kami... Bakit naging 2.2 billion yung pagbabayad when in fact the project cost is 8.5 billion and you have a budget from Congress in one year of 9.5 billion? I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of cost of money. Are you familiar with that? Are you familiar with the concept of cost of money? No? Are you familiar? Sorry, Marlon, no, no, asking no, no, no. you. You're not familiar yeah, with the concept. This, yeah. Ah, Explain so wala kang car loan. May car loan ka? Housing loan? Car Meron loan, ka? yes. Car loan. Mm -hmm. Nagbabayad kang interest? Yes. Oh, that's what cost of money is. Cost of money is cost of money. It's interest. In 2.49 billion, sir. Yeah. If you divide it with interest over five years, that's the that's the cost with cost of money. Siyempre, may cost of money eh. Di ba? Ano ako eh? Uh, investor ako eh. Di ba? Nag, ako ang nag-develop, ako nagpalabas ng pondo. Kung babayaran mo ako kay five years, magta-charge ako ng, ng interest at market rates, hindi ba? Sir, sure. uh, ilang percent po yun nung total? I'm not sure. Contract? What what interest? Sorry, I'm looking at our advisors here. What was the financial model there? You don't have it. Well, can we? we can, maybe we can just it's check. Uh, we can just check. But having said that, it actually is moot. Why? Because we're not doing that mode anymore. Okay. Because it was the decision to save on future interest payments. That was the decision. Para hindi natin magbayad ng interest. And this was a decision that was approved by the executive by the Department of Budget Management. It's, it was included in the National Expenditure Program for 2019, and it was approved by Congress. I was just curious, sir, kasi under the law, 12% um, lang yung po pwedeng kitain ng private. In fact, I think it's private, even lower than that. Pri private. If I'm not mistaken, no. It's subject to, there is no law that says 12%. Let me just clarify that no, for, the, for the information of everyone here. The law does not prescribe a percentage. 
No. I'll... It does not prescribe. It prescribes what is the uh, what is the market rate, the reasonable market rate at the time, which under a open economy changes. You cannot say 12%, Marlon. Interest rate can go up and down. You cannot just say 12%. Sorry, I don't know where you got no, me. No, I'll, I'll get back to you, sir. Pero may nakita po ako na uh, document saying that uh, private sector... It is reasonable. Is it is a reasonable rate of return or a reasonable cost of money. Yeah, no? So that, that, is, that is what it is. Thank you, sir. Oh, 10.57%. What's the cost of money is? Thank you. But still, you know, um, and this is from our consultants from the Asian Development Bank, ten point fifty-seven percent. Okay, but again, it doesn't apply anymore because we already got paid. We're already going to pay. Buune. So the interest, the interest that we only have to pay for. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, our advisors is only for one year. Correct. It's only for the duration or the dura or the duration of the the interest applicable from the time of of construction to the time of payment, and that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Anything else? Warren. Yeah, Warren de Guzman, ABS-CBN. I just wanted to ask you. You mentioned earlier that. Uh, uh, one of your advisors found that it would not be commercially viable, so you decided to bring government in with the JV. What's the government's plan, though, to recoup the cost? Yeah, uh, okay. Thank you for that, Warren. That's a great question. The white elephant question. You know, and I will respond to that now. First of all, when we say it's not viable, it means it's not viable now. At this point, to build this facility. That's why the private sector um, won't build it. No, because... You're still at the initial phases, um, and there's there's uh, there's very little traffic yet there. But the plan for New Clark City, remember, we're building a new metropolis. We're beginning to build a new metropolis, and these sporting facilities are part of that plan. They may have been advanced, yes, but this is a decision. Uh, that BCDA made because of a national and public need. And we were more than happy to do it to fill that public need now. So what is the plan after? It's very simple. Right now, those sports facilities are programmed to be used by various institutions that will be locating in New Clark City educational institutions, government institutions, even the neighboring uh, towns and cities can use them. They are what we call mixed and multi-use facilities. They were not built just for an event. No, that's why when we compare them to Athens or, or Rio de Janeiro, the main reason why those facilities uh, were not sustainable because they were simply built for one event. They were simply built for that. This one was not. We painstakingly took our time, effort, to plan this with ADB, with our Japanese and Singaporean partners, to plan out the use of these facilities for many years to come. So institutional use is one major. The schools that will be locating there, UP, TUP, PUP, Philippine Science High School, later on the Philippine High School for Sports that is already in Congress. Second, it will also be used by our national athletes because they have no training facilities. If I may, Gang Warren, no, I, I don't want to bore you with these anecdotes. Our national athletics team, before living in New Clark City beginning September of this year, they were training in Lingayen, Pangasinan. They were training in a university there uh, in you know, small dormitories and in a track that was so worn out that the rubber had completely disappeared. 
and they were running on cement. Cemento. No, ang athletes natin. In preparation for the games. When we invited them to test the track, sometime in August, sometime in August, they could not stop practicing because they were just so thrilled and so happy to finally have facilities like this. They could not believe it. They, they didn't want to leave. They didn't want to leave and stop. And now they were, they've been practicing there since September. Tatlong buwan, sila nagpa-practice doon. Tuwang-tuwa sila. Araw-araw, tatawid lang sila from Athletes Village, nandun na sila sa stadium. No? Si Raph, napapangiti. No, baka hindi, hindi siya naniniwala sa akin. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. No, seriously. Please interview these athletes. Don't, don't believe me. B believe them. So we do not have facilities like this. Our swimming team, our swimmers are forced to train abroad. Why? Because we don't have the facilities here. They have to train abroad to get their times accredited by FINA and by the accrediting bodies because there are no facilities here. They have to go abroad. Now they don't have to. Our divers have to go abroad. Our water polo team, they went to Spain, to Portugal, to Japan. Because they didn't have they didn't have these facilities. Uh, so so just to be clear, the youth will be through the. No, that's the first one. That's the first one, Warren. Sorry, I'm so, sorry. I just no, I get very emotional, because guys. I'm very sorry. No, I'm. I, it, it just you know, these these questions which we've answered several times already. It just makes me very emotional because. Um, really, we haven't built anything like this in the last 80 plus years. And now we're, you know, we're, I don't know, I don't, I don't, uh, it just frustrates me. No, anyway, so the other, the other point, Warren, is the plan from the very beginning, and ADB is also our advisor on this. No, sorry, I, I you know, I hate, you know, keep on pointing to ADB, but, you know, between you and me, without them, it would be very difficult for BCDA to really um, uh, go through all the process because we do not uh, have all of the necessary expertise for this. That's why we rely on advisors like ADB, similar to how we relied on the World Bank for the airport. Um, the plan was really to privatize the operations and maintenance. After we pay the, the, um, uh, the developer and the facilities are turned over to BCDA, meaning it will be our asset, no, it will be our asset already, no longer the, so the, the issue that Rappler raised about why, why are you giving uh, MTD 50% when it's your asset? Well, actually, we're not. We will only give them a share if it's still not fully paid. But since that's already moot and academic, because we're already fully paying it, the, the, the developer will have zero share once it's fully paid. It's all BCDA. So what BCDA wants to do together with the ADB is to look for a private operator. And it is up to the private operator to run it, to maintain it, and also to market it. Because, you know, look, at around, look around the country. There are very, very few facilities that can actually hold, you know, huge events, commercial events, you no, know, throughout the country that are, you know, Sorry to use the term, keep on using the term, world class. And New Clark City, believe me, by far is one of them. I've brought, I think, at least top five of, those de of the developers in the country to New Clark City. And all of them have been wowed by this facility. So, from commercial events like concerts to marketing it to, to, to tapping the sports tourism um, market throughout the world. You know, right now, we've already been uh, getting feelers from countries abroad uh, who want to train for Tokyo, to Tokyo 2020 in New York City in preparation for, for Tokyo 2020 because they have to acclimatize, they have to, they have to practice in the heat, uh, and they have to get used to the time zone. They're already approaching us because they saw the facilities on YouTube or in, or in media. 
But I, we BCDA believes that that is all the operations and maintenance and marketing is all best um, given to the pub, private sector. So that is what we will do. And in exchange, the private sector will, in all likelihood, uh, give BCDA a share in the revenue, similar to what we're doing with the Clark International Airport and the other uh, privatization projects that we're doing. So we've thought of this, and um, we're ready for it. And it, it's very, very important to us to ensure the, sus to ensure the sustainability of all of these uh, facilities. The, the, some have expressed interest, but I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not at liberty to tell you who at this point in time. What about the countries who want to train here? I think there's some countries in, uh, there's an Asian country who wants to hold um, the, uh, no, sorry, the International Accrediting Agencies wants to hold the, the Asian Championships of Swimming, and there are some countries, I think, in Europe. I, I don't have the information right now. They were just communicated to me very recently. Um, in, in Europe, in Central Europe, Eastern, uh, Eastern Europe, who want to train. Because it's hard. Of course, you know, the big countries, they're going to come to Singapore, they're going to come to, you know, to um, maybe China, Shanghai. There are not a lot of facilities like this uh, in Asia. You know? So we're actually very lucky to have them. You know? And um, I think there's a very good um, model being developed by the, in, in, with the assistance of the ADB to make sure of the sustainability of all these facilities with a partnership uh, with the private sector. Thanks, Warren. Sorry for the wrong, long, wrong, long, uh, long replies. I need wrong rep replies. Long replies. Sorry, I just have to make sure that you know I don't get uh, misquoted. Thank you. Any last question? Marlon. Sir, uh, yung binanggit nyo na cost of, cost of money and then yung nabanggit nyo na rin yung 50-50 na profit sharing. Um, who introduced that, sir? Is there, is those provisions already included in the uh, unsolicited proposal? Okay, so, uulit ako ah. Uulit ako, ha? sorry. Ha? Natanong na ni Raf. Nasa, wala sa draft, nasa final. Tama, Raf? Tama, di, di ba? Di po, sa unsolicited proposal po. Ano, kaya, from... nga, kaya nga, Margon, sinasagot kita. Eh. Sandali nga. Kasi, kung wala siya sa draft, o di wala siya sa unsolicited proposal, di ba? Di ba? Sorry, ha? I mean, ano naman tayo? Let's try to, you know, uh, sorry, teacher, kasi ako nung, nung bata ako eh. Kaya ano ako eh. No? I, I just want to make sure uh, people understand things very clearly. I don't want to leave things to doubt and so interpretation. Right. Anyway, so the 50-50 was actually in response to comments by the OGCC. This is one of the provisions that was introduced in order to address the comments and suggestions of the OGCC in its January 30 um, comments. Okay, now, Sino nag introduce non? It was introduced uh, by us in uh, in um, in uh, consultancy with in consultation with our advisors and obviously also accepted by mutually accepted by the uh, other party because in in a contract you know you gotta it was introduced by us so it was not introduced by by MTD it was actually in response to the um, comments and just suggestions of OGC. But like I said, no, those provisions actually don't apply because we already opted for the payment in full upon completion and acceptance. So if the January 30 uh, OGCC contract review is already enough, is sufficient, why then the need for the October 2, 2018? Uh, okay, I will uh, pass it on to Justice. Okay. So I think that's already been answered earlier. Uh, the uh, the January 30 opinion or contract review stated some uh, suggestions and clarifications. So uh, the uh, October 30 contract review was necessary in order to confirm the clarifications made and that the uh, agreement was really in order. Uh, okay, Attorney Vega. Sir? 
uh, un under the existing uh, rules and regulations, laws uh, regarding uh, joint venture agreements of a state agency with a private partner, is the a state agency re required to pay the cost to the um, uh, private partner? Uh, the the particular aspect of JVs really are uh, they are partnership and that they would contribute to the partnership so that they can achieve the purpose. So that's really the, uh, the main uh, aspect of a JV. So yung pagbayad po sa partner is uh, just part of the uh, JV? The, that the, would the be the uh, business arrangement made by the BCDA as long as it is within the guidelines of the joint venture agreement. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess the short answer to that uh, is yes, it is allowed. JV is a joint venture. There are responsibilities of each partner. No? And in a JV, as long as it is legal, as long as it was done transparently and above board, as long as it was subjected to the guidelines, legal guidelines, which required a, a competitive selection through Swiss Challenge, then yes, it is valid. It is valid. And that's what the OGCC opinion says. Okay, so I think, you know, I think we've, we've been going around here and just answering the same question over and over again, no? But you know, it, uh, but if you want to go over this in, for a 24 hour cycle, uh, in, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. I understand, Margot. And I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here and all the others. Yeah, but what we're saying uh, is, medyo. But it's okay. We can seek more clarifications if you want. But you know, we're 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 what we're trying to tell you is all of this is above board. Everything is above board and passes the very, very rigorous standards, not only of the Philippines but also of multilateral agencies such as the Asian Development Bank. This is, this is really, you know, and um, uh, some may disagree that, you know, that's your, that's your um, prerogative and that's your, um, that's your uh, choice. But we stand by our decisions. We stand by the mode. And I think what is most important is that these facilities are here, they're done, they're being enjoyed by everybody, especially our athletes and our, our people in general. And we deserve them. That's what's most important for us. And, uh, you know, we're very proud, no? together with um, our partners um, in our legal counsel, we're very proud to, be a, to have been part of this. It's really historic. This has never been done in the country before. And for sports facilities, not since 1934 have we built this. I know some of you, you know, have your own opinions, have your own, you, know, you may smirk at this. But, you know, at the end of the day, we will be judged by the Filipino people. And believe me, when I see them there, when I see them there, when I see our athletes, all of these clarifications, as you call them, don't bother us because we're nowhere in the right. So with that, I think we can, we can honor this now and then. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, so sure, Raf. No problem. I just wanna, just wanna read this, sir. Para malinaw, sir. Justice Vega, you said na uh, the, uh, the, parang the October one was just, uh, I don't know, uh, affirmed the uh, the previous one uh, the issued last january pero uh, nakalagay kasi dito sir na uh, i'll just read this no uh, 
it should be noted that the joint venture should cover the entire project, not only the NGAC. In other words, the joint venture should include every component of the project and not to carve out a certain portion thereof under a different framework. And uh, uh, yun yung nilang build transfer. Uh, this quote, sir, uh, the legal effect brought by the difference in the frameworks cannot be overemphasized. The procedures of the two in the competitive selection or bidding are entirely different and incompatible from each other. So, sir, my question would be, so uh, how was this uh, matter uh, resolved? Uh, I mean, I mean that, uh, I mean, I can, I can already uh, yeah. anticipate. Sure, you can anticipate, but don't anticipate. Just let us answer first so that it's not subject to your interpretation. No? First of all, BCDA wrote OGCC to clarify its position no? and the whole structure of the joint venture. And this was BCDA's position. And uh, before I pass it on to Justice Vega, after that clarification, OGCC rendered its opinion in the October um, 2018 uh, memorandum or um, review no and I'll, I'll now I'll pass it on to uh, no, sub, to 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 justice vega yeah the uh, the particular uh, comment on that was uh, clearly clarified by bcda and that it would be uh, necessary because it was in fact bcda who requested that this uh, facility be built together with the whole NGAC project. So when it was clarified, it was uh, discussed with the legal team and the, uh, the, 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 whole, the, whole, the whole project was indeed found out to be in accordance with law. I think it's it's pretty clear, eh? uh, you know, unless you refuse to, to to, to yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, uh, but you know, clarifying is one thing, but you know, uh, it's another thing not to uh, not to, not to report it or not to write it down. You know? But anyway, having said that, having said that, there is one question here, and I will and I will end with this. You know? Is the joint venture of BCDA with MTD to construct the first phase, phase 1A as we call it, of the National Government Administrative Center, which includes the sports facilities, uh, legal, transparent, valid, above board, I don't know, I can't think of any other uh, uh, ad positive adjective to describe it, uh, or compliant with law? The answer, as we have given in several statements already to uh, media outlets and as has been confirmed today uh, by our statutory council, the answer is an unequivocal yes. That's it, really. That is the bottom line. No, um, of the of the press conference today. So with that, again, I just want to thank everybody. I want to thank everyone. Um, uh, I know sometimes, you know, government and the media, you know, we struggle. We struggle. We 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 are at odds. But I think communication is what's key. And communication is always two way. It's always two way. And um, if we're able to talk to each other um, more openly, as we have today, and I'm really happy about this, no, we, we've communicated very openly today, I think we can address all of these concerns in a way that does not impart malice or does not, uh, um, does not throw mud at a project that frankly is my god it's it's i've never seen a project built 
with the national government that is as beautiful and as beneficial as what we've tried to build in Clark. And this also includes the airport. And I'm so proud of it. And not only am I proud of the project itself under the, under the leadership of President Duterte, I'm proud at how it was done. Because it was done so transparently. We could have not gotten the ADB or the World Bank. We could have. There are very few agencies in government that actually do this. But we did it. Why? Because we wanted to ensure transparency. We wanted to make sure that no matter what happens, whether present government and future government, this project will be unquestionable. Kasi sayang eh. Sayang talaga eh. Sayang ang ganda, ang ganda ganda ng proyekto. But it is so easy to write an article without all the facts. It's so easy. It's so easy to say it's defrauding the government. It's so easy to quote an anonymous source. Diba? But to do a project like this in the most transparent, above-board way possible, and to implement it in the way it's been implemented. We've all been witness to government projects in the past where the government has paid full. And where is the project? It's gone. It's not even existent. People can't even see it. Look at North Rail. One example. Sorry. Ano kasi yun eh? Natawa siya kasi subsidiary ng BCDA yun eh. Pero, dati pa yun. Look at North Rail. Umutang, binayaran yung utang, alang tren. Walang tren. Asa ng tren? Wala. Merong poste. Nagawa yung mga poste. Pero ngayon, since hindi maayos yung poste, dahil single track yun, ay sorry, uh, ano yun? Narrow gauge yun. Lahat ng poste ngayon, ginigiba na. At nagiba na ata. Kasi gagawin na ng hapon ng maayos. Yun ang napaka talagang defrauding the government. Ang masakit pa doon, nagkasuhan, muntik pang matalo yung gobyerno sa North Trail case. Buti na lang sinetal ng ni, ni President Duterte under his term. Yun ang ano, yun ang... Uh, Bayad, umutang ka na, nagbayad ka na, pero wagang trend. So, you know, with that, I just want to thank everyone. Really, dito, I'm not, I'm really being very sincere. That's why I really came here. You know, we're preparing for the typhoon in New Clark. No? We're making sure that our athletes are safe there, but I really made it a point to come here because we really need to annoy, to clarify all of this, and I hope this has been clarified today, and I just want to thank, again, Justice Vega and OGCC for hosting this. And then and helping us clarify this um, to everybody, including our people who are watching today. So with that, thank you very much. And I, I want to invite everyone to watch the game, support our athletes. And let's all pray uh, that the typhoon is not as strong as it is, is being projected to be. And we're all safe, everyone, especially our athletes and our guests. So with that, thank you very much. Good morning to all of you. Uh, may triathlon relay sa tubig ngayon, kung gusto yung manood. Sayang hindi kinakapanood ng water polo. Ay, manunood pa. Wala na, tapos na. Ay, 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 ay